Okay, we're going to do some today just some warm ups to get us started with doing these physical practices every day. As we all heard, we all have heard that um, Zazen is a somatic practice, a physical practice, as much as it is anything else. And I found it makes all the difference in the world to use the body a little bit, even before we were accustomed to putting these sessions into our sessions, I would always find a half hour to do some body practice. It makes a big, big difference. Not just to the, uh, in terms of the pain of the body, but in our overall experience of being able to be embodied, which is a big part of it. So we're going to start slow because our first principle is do no harm. And, uh, for movements that people aren't accustomed to, we know that we can get sore if we do too much. So we're going to just start today with a pretty simple warm-up series, and then every day we'll do a little bit more. And especially the one we do today, I really recommend to do first thing in the morning also. It's not that hard. It's just warming up all the joints in the body, starting with the feet. And uh, even if you just do 10 minutes of it, it'll make a difference to your morning sitting, I promise. So. We're going to start down at the feet, and it's a little tricky to get my feet on camera here. Um, you might want to be near a wall because what we're going to do is some ankle circles, and I'm going to use this little device here so uh, because balance can be an issue, and I'm going to have to hold my foot up high so you can all see it. So we're going to do ankles in one direction, doesn't matter which foot you start with. It may seem like ankles don't have a lot to do with Zazen, but they actually take a certain amount of torque, especially if you're sitting half lotus or deftly in full lotus. So a few circles in one direction, a few in the other. Ideally, time them with the breath. It's hard for me to do if I'm talking. And then do some pointing and flexing, and obviously, it's better if your foot's lower than that. Otherwise, it's, it's a bit much. So I'm only holding mine up that high to demonstrate. Okay, and now we'll do the other one. First in one direction. It has to only be a few inches off the ground, or you can even experiment with resting the toes or heel on the ground if the balance is too much for you. And that other direction. And now let's do some pointing and flexing. And pointing and flexing, you can probably feel also works your calves, which is a nice plus. Okay. Now we're going to do knees. So hands rest just above the knees, not directly on them. And starting gently, we're going to do some circles to warm up the joints. You don't have to be too vigorous with this. It's better to start slow. If it feels good, you can do some more. So as far as timing with the breath, I might do inhale, that's two circles, exhale, two circles, or something like that. Other direction. If there's anything we do that doesn't feel good for your body, please modify it or don't do it. So next we're going to do some hip circles. Again, start gently. Again, timing to the breath makes it inherently meditative. And if you've been working with putting your attention in the hara, you should be able to feel the connection of the hara to the pelvis in this movement.
now the other direction. Okay, now let's do some figure eight in one direction. And you don't have to go to your full range of motion, at least not today. You can keep it small. We're just warming the body, getting some circulation going. Okay, so you may need the wall or to put your head on some support for this one. We're just going to do some leg circles with the legs extended circling from the hips, whichever side feels good. Again, I'm getting about two circles for each inhale, two circles for each exhale. If your rate's different, that's fine. Other direction. But the point is, just as in slow kinhin, we're timing breath to movement. Like Qigong, and that's done in yoga as well. It makes it also a body practice, not just not just a warming up, but a mindfulness practice as well. Okay, other leg. And let's just do some stepping in place. A lot of problems with the knee actually come from the hip. So we want those hip joints to be loosened up. So that took us about five minutes, and that's a nice series just for the legs. Even if you have five minutes in the morning, your sitting, your whole sitting day will go easier, I promise. Okay. So now we're going to work with the arms a little bit. Let's just start with wrists. We can do them both at the same time. Circle in one direction. Again. It may seem like the wrists aren't used that much, but how about holding that mudra for a whole week? I definitely have my wrists stiffen up and try to start to hurt at times. And if they do, it's a nice little treat to give them. And with any of this, it's good to do it even during a kinhin, when we're fast walking, step out of the zendo. If something's starting to bind up, it's better to get on it right away. Also for the wrists and actually forearms as well, gentle bending like this with one arm extended, drawing back on the fingers with the other hand. And you might, if you extend the thumb out and up, get a little stretch on the thumb as well. And you can shake the wrist out in between. Other side. Experiment with the thumb. You got to stretch all the way across the palm. Those thumbs touching in the Zazen Mudra. They definitely can get tight and stiffen up. Okay, release. We can shake them out. Oh, actually, let's also shake the legs out. We can do that. Just a general shake out of the legs. One at a time. Of course. 
guess, unless you've mastered levitation. Just general shaking out. Okay, one more thing for the wrist and forearms. Make a fist. Take the other hand over it, and we're just bending down. Again, if you haven't done these before, don't go to the full range of motion. We're just looking for a gentle stretch and warm up today. And we'll work into more and more day by day. Okay, it definitely feels good to shake the hand out after these. Same thing with this one. That's the other side. And this is static, but we can still notice the relaxation response that comes with the exhale. We can use that to relax a little bit more with each exhale. And in fact, it's a great thing we do when we sit down for thousand to really notice that the body, mind, and emotions I like to settle down on an exhale. And if we notice that, we can just gently encourage that. Obviously, grasping never works, but we can just gently encourage the body, mind, everything to settle on the exhales. Okay, let's try some warm circles. If it's okay for you to put your fingertips on your shoulders, great. If they don't reach, you can do the same thing from up here. We're just going to circle forward. And let's put a little curving and lifting in the upper spine together with this. So when we go forward, we're slumping over. When we go back, we're lifting the chest. Again, not overdoing. I don't know about you, but this is the other area that tends to get tight for me with sitting. If you've done cat, cow before, this is like doing a small version of that. And now circle in the other direction, lifting when the arms go back. And just relaxing when we go forward. Again, timing to the breath. out the arms. Okay, and let's just do shoulders first forward. Again, we can accentuate the curve forward and lift the chest and go upright or even a little arch in the other direction, whatever feels good for your body. Curving and straightening the spine some. Very helpful to keep it limber and keep the muscles from seizing up. Okay, now we'll go backward with the shoulders. And especially if you draw the shoulders somewhat together as they go back. Again, not straining, but just exploring. You'll find that the chest opens, the back straightens more, the shoulders can drop further from the ears. All good stuff for sitting. Okay, I can shake all that out a little bit. Okay, now let's try the really hard one, which is one that goes forward while the other goes back. hard to do, but it actually gets into places and in the, the other direction. Oops. <laughs> like I say, it's not easy to do. Okay, we're going to start over. There we go. You 
gets into some places along the spine that the other way doesn't. And then let's just do some of these, just arm swings. Again, not overdoing. And then there's another version of arm swing, which is nice, which is swinging side to side like this. And when you do it, this foot in the direction you're facing it turns in that direction so you don't overstrain your back. So you see my foot points that way, foot points the other way. And just let the arms swing freely from the shoulders. a little twisting motion to the spine but the foot pointing out keeps it from being excessive. If you're accustomed to doing this kind of motion you don't have to point the foot out it's just kind of a safety thing and it also continues to work the hips a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> okay shoulder shrugs. And we're going to lift them and drop them. And we're going to do a bunch of these. That's three, four. Inhale, lift, exhale, drop, five. do a kundalini yoga series sometimes where they're just crazy how much they ask you to do things. These are done 108 times. So we're not going to do that today, but I was surprised to find the first time I did 108. Boy, were my shoulders ever relaxed after that. So I'll leave it to you to do whatever amount feels good to you. Okay, let's actually do a full body shake. This is, um, this is actually a Qigong move called rattling the bones. And it can be really fun and really releasing. But again, just don't overdo it. And you're, just, you know, you're just rattling all the bones. It's what everybody wants to do. And don't be afraid of looking weird or crazy because that's the whole point. Oh, okay. All right. Now we're going to do neck. So this is a series I learned from a chiropractor years and years ago. He told me a good mnemonic device for how to remember it. It was yes. No, maybe so. So we're going to do those three moves. First is yes, coming down, nodding up. Take care of your neck. Don't overdo the looking up. Don't crunch the back of your neck. Try, if you're going to look up, lift the chest, extend the neck rather than crunching it. If it doesn't feel good to look up, just don't. Just do the downward. And I don't know how many we've done, maybe 10. Okay, so that's the yes. Now we'll do the no. And I found the best way to do this is inhale, center. Exhale, look over one shoulder. Inhale, center. Exhale, look over the other shoulder. Inhale, exhale. Again, we don't have to crane. 
Better to go today a little to the inside of your edge. being Zen, we're going to transcend yes and no, and we're going to go to not knowing, maybe so. Here, one shoulder, ear to the other. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Again, it's more about extending the neck than crunching it over. Just go as far as is good for your body. Shake out the upper body, neck area, shoulder area a little bit, as much as it feels comfortable. And let's just finish by doing some neck circles. If you're not accustomed to doing neck circles, I would only do them forward. That means like this, over the shoulder, across the other shoulder, and around. If you're accustomed to doing them, or you feel like your neck really likes the idea, then you can go back. Just know again, we're not crunching the neck. When we go back, we're lifting the chest. We're extending the head as that was going diagonally behind to where, maybe to where the wall meets the ceiling. And the other direction. Okay, again, you can always shake out any time. Okay, I want to do some simple upward reaches. We begin with hands and got show. And feet are parallel, however wide apart feels good to you. And exhale, you drop your hands on an inhale, reach up. Stretch up some. Exhale down to Gasho. When you stretch up, if it feels good, it's okay with your body. Your head can go back and look up. If it's not okay for your neck especially, then you don't have to look up, but still just reach up. If it's really okay with your body, then you can put a little bit of an arching backwards from the upper back. Last time. Okay. This time we're going to do an upward reach with hands joined like this, and we're going to turn them away like that, and we're going to reach up in a pencil stretch. Again, just pay attention to what your neck wants to do or doesn't want to do. Stretching just upward is enough. Hold for a few breaths, keep breathing. And draw your navel in towards your spine so you don't over arch your lower back. Okay, let's bring the hands down again. We're going to do that again this time. We'll stretch up to the middle, but we're going to bend also to either side. So for this one, it's very good to hold your belly in. My lower, I have a bit of an exaggerated curve in my lumbar spine. And uh, if I'm not careful with it, I can overdo it. So this is a good protection, engaging your core by pulling the navel back toward the spine. Okay, again, we'll reach up. Take one breath. Next exhale, go over to one side 
again, we're not crunching so much as reaching towards probably that place where the ceiling and wall join. Navel pulling towards spine, breathing. Come back to center. Other side. Stretching, reaching. Just a couple breaths. Okay, we'll come back. Shake out arms and shoulders. Got time for just a couple more for today. We should do some kind of a forward bend. Loosen up the lower spine. And for today, I'd just like us to we're always bending from the hips, which is here, not from the waist up here. So it's good to put your hands down there to signal where the tops of your hips are. And we'll inhale, and on the next inhale, today I'd suggest you just walk your hands down your legs. And if you like, stop right above the knees, and even bending forward with the knees still somewhat bent, it's still a good stretch for the lower back, for the hamstrings. If you're accustomed, of course, to go further down, you can. We might as well take it easy. You can also go to shins or ankles. If it feels good, you can cross your arms and hang. And the knees still don't have to be straight. They do bent a little. Whichever position you're in, take a few breaths. A little bit of swaying is good. Shaking out your head is good. And now we're going to walk up the same way. Hands walking up. Shins, if they're on the shins, otherwise just up the thigh. Just to give us some support as we come back to upright. And that's what we've got for today. We'll do some more tomorrow. Happy saving, everyone. Thank you.